going on everyone us laker fans have had quite the emotional roller coaster the last few hours all started when shams uh made a tweet saying the lakers jazz and timberwolves are in discussion on a three-team deal that would send d'angelo russell to the lakers russell westbrook and draft compensations such as a first round pick to the utah jazz and then the minnesota timberwolves would get mike conley and then Shams followed that up with ongoing discussions have included Utah's Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt as part of a potential three-team deal to the Lakers, sources said. Size are working through uh, pick protections and additional draft compensation too, per sources. So, I mean, this just became even bigger. It was like, oh, we're getting D'Lo and we're getting Beasley and Vanderbilt for only one first? This would be fantastic. This would be amazing. Absolute home run. Rob Palinka gets this done. I mean, seriously, what more could you ask for? And then we'd still have Patrick Beverly and Lonnie Walker to then take that other first and maybe go get another piece, especially because we'd likely have to clear off a roster spot. Absolute home run, right? But then Woj came in and said, and had to spoil it all, right? Woj came in and said, ESPN sources, three-team trade is largely hinging on how Minnesota values D'Angelo Russell in potential deal and the return of draft assets lakers and jazz have significant deal structure in place but minnesota has been engaged elsewhere on russell too so we've gotten reports that teams like the clippers uh, may potentially be in the conversation to land d'angelo russell here's the thing this is again this is just my thought but i am laker domus i was the one that spoke this into existence made a video like a month ago about d'lo and then even the other day i made a video about d'lo uh but on a serious note my guess is that they have the groundwork laid out for this deal. They've kind of figured out what the, the structure of the deal is. And now Minnesota is just trying to see, is there anything we could get better for D'Lo? Now, they've been trying to trade D'Lo for a while now. They, they've they put it out there. Teams have called. Clearly, there was no demand or major demand for D'Angelo Russell, which makes sense. I mean, how many teams have a need for D'Lo? Maybe the Clippers, yes, but most teams don't really need D'Angelo Russell or want D'Angelo Russell, uh, and he's going to want to get paid. So he's a player that could also just leave. So what team is going to give substantial draft compensation to a guy that, one, wants to be really paid, may not even be a real need for you, and on top of that, could just walk, and now you're out of those assets? So... My guess is that this kind of stays in limbo. The deal and the offer is probably still going to be there uh, for all sides. It, I mean, Woj even said that the Lakers and the Jazz have their side kind of worked out. And I think Minnesota goes and tries to find a deal for D'Lo. I don't think that they find one that makes sense. Uh, even the Clippers, right? Even if they do the Clipper deal, you're going to have to take back long-term salary. Like, is that what you want to do? Uh, you know, and are, are those players, do they make sense for you? Like, how does that work? Although maybe the Clippers, maybe they'd be willing to give like a, a Kyrie return, right? And they give, you know, uh, like a Terrence Mann and and Luke Kennard and, you know, a couple firsts or something like that. Maybe they would do that for D'Lo, but like, does that really make sense for the Clippers? Does D'Lo really fit that need? I kind of feel like it's a lot of the same clunkiness that... Kyrie might bring, but it is something that they may potentially do. Can't completely rule it out. Uh, but nonetheless, I, I don't I don't think they're gonna get a major return, in my opinion. I just don't. So depends on what is the return that Minnesota is getting for D'Lo, right? I mean, if all it is just Mike Conley, or is that something that they're really gonna be enticed to? I mean, getting Mike Conley is better than you know, just losing D'Lo for nothing. And Mike Conley might be a better fit for the Timberwolves, then D'Lo, uh, but D'Lo's been balling for them, and Minnesota has, like, a crazy stat, like, when D'Lo scores 20 or more a game, they're, they're like, oh, really hard to beat, they have, like, an 85% win rate or something like that, or 83%, um, they win, when D'Lo has a really good game for them, they usually win, uh, more so than most of the, the other pieces on their roster, but nonetheless, look, Minnesota, I, I get, I don't think that they're going to get a real return, but do they look at it as like, we want more than Mike Conley? And if I'm not mistaken, they traded Wiggins and a first to get D'Lo, right? If I'm not mistaken on that. So they might be looking at it as like, you know, we we got killed in that deal if we just let him go. But again, if you get Conley, at least Conley, he has only like half of his money is guaranteed next year. So you have that. Maybe you can move him in a deal if you needed to um, or if he's a better fit. Perfect. Maybe it makes Minnesota just a better team in general. 
Uh, you know, maybe you get some seconds or something. I'm sure the Lakers would throw in a couple extra things that they needed to. They just don't want to trade both first. As long as it doesn't come down to both first, I could still see this deal getting done. And I mean, for the Lakers, this is an absolute home run, right? Obviously, it makes the most sense for the Lakers than anybody because the Lakers would get D'Lo, who won, we know is a closer, right? I mean, I, Mr. Ice in his veins. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, isn't afraid of the moment, can hit the big shot, can make shots down the stretch. A guy that can score at all three levels. The Lakers need that so badly you don't understand, right? Like the Lakers don't have just like a bucket getter on all three levels. They have guys like, you know, Lonnie Walker, he can catch and shoot, knock it down, and he can just use his athleticism to get to the rim. Same thing with LeBron right? He's more of like, yeah, he can post up, shoot the three, you know, do the little fadeaway mid-range, but he's not like a natural scorer, right? He's not a guy that is like D'Lo can shoot off the dribble, shoot off the bounce. Like all of those things are what the Lakers could really use. The closest thing we have to that is probably Austin Reeves, um, but he's not as refined as D'Lo is. D'Lo also gives you the same idea that Russ and Schroeder and all the things that the Lakers continuously keep trying to do next to LeBron is give you another playmaker. D'Lo is a guy that can play both guard spots. He can play the two. He can play the one. He's a guy that can score, but he can also facilitate. You know, he is a guy that can get you eight to 10 assists a night, but still maintain 20 to 25 points. And D'Lo also is a guy that can go off for 30 on any given night. Provides the three-point shooting. I believe D'Lo has like the fifth best uh, percentage or something like that in the league right now, or fifth uh, based on um, shot attempts. Three, I think it's 350 made threes. He has the fifth best three point percentage, so he's top five right now in that regard. As far as volume and percentage, that would be fantastic. And then on top of that, again, you get a closer, you get a guy that can relieve LeBron, relieve AD, play next to LeBron, play next to AD, uh, a guy that can play on the ball, off the ball. It's just D'Lo would make a ton of sense, which is why I was talking about D'Lo a month ago. Because I was like, look, this is what, like, this is what the Lakers need. Guy like this. And he may be obtainable and not cost the absolute farm to get him. And then on top of that, you know, you're not only getting D'Lo, but you're probably getting uh, Beasley and Vanderbilt too. Like if that can happen, that's perfect, right? Because now you got Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt and AD, will solve so much of our defensive problems. I mean, go watch Vanderbilt defensively for Utah. That guy is everywhere. Seriously, he is everywhere. And so you could actually have, if you wanted to, have LeBron, Vanderbilt, AD. Now you have your basic defense in AD and Vanderbilt. And then have, uh, you know, D'Lo and Beasley as your two fronts. So now you got, yes, D'Lo is a, D, a defensive liability, but you have Beasley, you have Vanderbilt, and you have AD to make up for that. And LeBron, we know can lock down, not for 48 minutes, but in crucial times, games on the line, or we need a stop, you, we can get AD to stop that. It gives us another wing, gives us youth. D'Lo and Beasley are both 26. And then you have Vanderbilt, who's what, 23, 24? And then on top of that, you get Rui Hachimura. I mean, if you could turn Russell Westbrook one first-round pick and Kendrick Nunn into Rui Hachimura, M uh, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt, and D'Angelo Russell, I mean, give give Rob the GM of the year. I mean, that'd be amazing. Seriously, that would be amazing. You can make an argument that that's better than the Kyrie deal. I think it is. And I was the one that was like, hey, Kyrie's impact, this, that, and the other. It's better than doing this and that and the other. But it's because you still get a guy in D'Lo that can attack at all three levels at a high efficiency. So you get a lot of what Kyrie Irving would have given you, which is what the Lakers need. Now, Kyrie is just a completely different type of player in general, like just the atmospheric just pool that he has. Uh, but D'Lo provides a lot of those same things. And then on top of that, not only are you getting the same idea as Kyrie Irving, you're also getting a sizable 3 and three and D uh, uh, shooting guard and a sizable D, not so much 3, wing that can play both forward spots. I mean, that's huge if you're the Lakers. 
And now you have shooting next to LeBron, uh, which also Dennis Schroeder now gets to go to the reserve point guard position, which I think he's better suited for, right? So now you have a bench that could really help. And on top of that, you could still do another deal. If you only have to give up one first, you'd still have Patrick Beverly and Lonnie Walker plus a first and maybe a second or whatever, right? And maybe now you could go get Gary Trent. That could work. That could be solid. Right or or if you or if you want like Boyan or if you whatever whatever it is that they want I mean I'd still kind of like Gary Trent but you know I, I still I, I mean regardless I I would love to just go get another piece do these two moves do the, this deal in the three team trade and then go get that problem is when you're talking three team trades you know it's the same you know three you know three teams is where trades go to die right because there's always that one team that ends up wanting more the Lakers last season had a three-team deal locked up and completely went fell through because of the New York Knicks. They they got greedy at the final hour as they were submitting everything and, you know, just decided, ah, never mind, we don't want to do that. You know, so whatever it takes to get this done outside of two firsts, I still wouldn't be completely against them giving up both firsts. Like, if you send one first to, D, uh, to Minnesota and you send one first to uh, Utah... Because I just think D'Angelo Russell solves so many of your problems. A efficient three-level scorer, a guy that can shoot the three, a guy that can close games for you down the stretch in crunch time, that can hit the shots, that isn't afraid of the moment. You get a young, sizable 3 and D, uh, you know, wing. You get Beasley, who, again, sizable shooting guard. Also, Beasley is like 12th. And that stat I mentioned earlier of like 353s, like Beasley's like 12. So again, you'd have two of the top 12 guys, you know, two top 10 guys in three-point percentage at volume. That's great. So that means you could give these guys, you know, if these guys shooting 10 threes a game, they're going to make four of them. And it's just, and provide some defense and add some depth and rotation and you know, maybe you could still do another move, right? Like, if the reports are true that Gary Trent can be had for seconds, go do a Rui type deal, right? So say you have to send a first to say you have to send a first to Utah, first to Minnesota. If you can get the Gary Trent deal for Patrick Beverly, Lonnie Walker in three seconds, like you did for Rui Hachimura, perfect, absolute home run. If all is said and done, if all is said and done, and we get Gary Trent. Beasley, Vanderbilt, Rui, and Jor- and uh, D'Angelo Russell. And we can't win a championship with those guys. I, I Then I don't know what to tell you. You know? Um, but time will tell. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. You know, I, I don't want people to get their hopes up too much. But, you know, bring D'Lo if you can. I, I've been preaching D'Lo for some time because, again, he's he was an alternative that I don't don't think would be expensive, that could really provide a lot of what this Lakers team needs. And the other things are defense, which Vanderbilt would make up a lot for, and then also three-point shooting, which if you could get a Gary Trent, if you could get a Beasley, that adds defense, but it also adds three-point shooting. Our defense would be better. Our three-point shooting would be better. We'd be a much more complete team. I mean, even if you don't want to go Vanderbilt, you're starting five. Like, if you have Russell, Beasley, Rui, LeBron, and AD, that's a great, that's, to me, that's a contending starting five. And then, or Vanderbilt, whichever. Again, that's a contending starting five. And then off the bench, you have, let's say, Dennis Schroeder. You have Austin Reeves. You have Rui or Vanderbilt. You have Winning Gabriel. You have Thomas Bryant. You, have, I mean, the list just goes on and on for the potential that this could lead to. So if you can do it, you absolutely do it. If you can get this deal done, they got to get this deal done. Got to get this deal done. Um, but, you know, time will tell. Again, I, I'm sure that they're, they're just doing their due diligence, you know, and you can't really blame them for it. You know, I mean, we would want the Lakers to do the same thing, right? We would want the Lakers to, you know, hey, don't just if you can get what if you can get something better, make sure you make sure you can. And so I do think that 
this deal could get done. It probably doesn't get done today. If it gets done, we probably hear about it in the uh, in the morning. It's probably something that we wake up to and it's like it was completed. I imagine that Minnesota is going to take this day, take the rest of the night, kind of make sure, do their due diligence. Let's make sure that there's nothing else out there. If there's nothing else out there, okay, let's do this deal. Let's finalize this. Let's get a Mike Conley to help us. Yes, the Lakers get D'Lo, but I'm sure that they like their chances. They like their odds. And then everybody, you know, everybody gets their way. Everyone gets what they want. Everyone's happy. And I think the Lakers make out like absolute bandits. Absolute bandits. So we'll see. Time will tell. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. So I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Love this trade. Hate this trade. Do you think it happens? Do you think it doesn't happen? Um, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comments below.